This is Matt from the Dice of the Round Table. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you know about the future content. If you appreciate this content, give me a thumbs up. If you have questions, put in the comments or your own thoughts. But right now we're going to talk about Victory at Seas. I've done turn base, first impressions, breakdown of um, the different factions. So let's talk about what I'm thinking about my final thoughts leading into the pre-release as we're waiting for it to come out. I think the game on merits are awesome. Let's do the plus sides. The turns are very smooth, I feel like. The game mechanics are awesome. I really enjoyed playing with the ships on the table using everything they provide, the dice rolling. I was really satisfied with getting a chance to roll plenty of dice. Now, things I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. The game setup, the asymmetrical objectives in the game, the options and the different types of fleet battles there are, I think all that bodes very well for this. Now the, eh, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to play point-wise. I play a lot of games. I've done Armada in a tournament faction, bold action tournament scene. I've played Blood Red Skies, Black Seas, Cruel Seas. I've played plenty of Osprey games, Frostgrave, and some other games with the points. The points are what always seems to be the kicker. Did we point the unit correctly with what it does? And I'm concerned. The Americans and British have battleships in the book for the sample rule book, 475 points. They're very comparable. The Germans get a 600 point battleship, but the Germans didn't really have many battleships. Then we get the Japanese. And the example in the book is Yamato. It's a super battleship. It's a thousand points. I want to know what their regular battleship looks like. In the demo set, I in the gameplay, I played a cruiser and a destroyer, American and Japanese against each other. At the end of the day, the Americans got some good rolls and did a lot more damage to the Japanese fleet. So my concern is the American ships being cheaper against the Japanese. You get more American ships on the table than Japanese. If I have more ships, I got more dice coming at you. I have the ability to delay my, my initiative, delay my movement, and you're penalized for having less, more expensive ships that are going to be in a turkey shoot at some point. Unless you have super haul points, which I don't know. I, I need to play a bigger game with a lot more variations in the units to get a feeling for the point cost. Cruel Seas, I'm, I'm concerned about the point cost in that game for veteran to regular crew. Now in Black Seas, I think the point costs are awesome. In this one, I don't know. I haven't played enough. The other thing I don't know is the record keeping. So that's going to take us to the eh part about this game. I think there should have been two versions. A simple version, give me the card, I'm playing that ship, I'm keeping track, I get a critical hit, I lose an inch of movement. I lose something on my attack rolls for weapon damage. Instead, I got, oh, wait a minute, this ship got what on that roll? What guns don't work or what does work? Oh, wait a minute, I'm playing the 19 blah 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 version of this ship. So I don't have this weapon, I have a different weapon. Or I have more haul points or I have less haul points. The con condensedness of the cards and all the information they're trying to communicate was a lot. I feel like you need, as someone shared with me on the Facebook page for Victory at Sea, um, the Mongoose page, where it's a page and it's split in half. You have two shifts per page. You put all your information on the page and that's how you track your information. So if you got 15 ships, you're going to need um, eight pages. And you're going to have to track them all. Which, for what this game does, I think it has some great cool flavor with the critical hits and how they affect some things and not other things, depending on your dice rolls, to show the randomness of where did that shell explode on the ship. But I think it's the main detractor for the game. When I want to play a big game, I'm going to have so many sheets taking up the table that I'm already supposed to be playing on 6x4 for a mega game. Now I need so much more room for all those sheets to keep track of everything. At least with Star Wars Armada, it's tarot-sized cards, but the board is 6 by 3 So I get an extra foot, so about 6 inches per person, and, and that is the stuff 
where I can put my fleet on and keep track of those cards. So my final thoughts, I am super excited to play this game. I think the potential is really there for maybe everyone having their own like one or two ships they bring to a battle. And we do World of Warships, your team versus our team. Maybe everyone brings a cruiser, a destroyer, and a battleship. And so everyone brings one of each of those ships. And if you have two or three versus three, you're going to have nine or six ships on each side. And you set up some terrain and go for it. Or even have, if it's like a two versus two, have one destroyer, one cruiser, one battleship, one carrier. I think the possibility is very interesting for what you can do with this game. But again, it's that record keeping. I think some people that are really into naval things, this is going to be a great game. Those of you that are intrigued by it, play the cards. Play the cards face up. Don't worry about all the historical backside of it. And just enjoy the game for what it is. I think the potential is there for be a really fun game. Sit back. It has some depth if you really want to get into it. But if you just want to play simple and here's the card, this is what I got, and I'm just playing with a couple ships, I think it's great too. So I hope you're eager looking forward to this. If you're on the fence, maybe this helped persuade you. If it didn't help persuade you, I'm thinking I'm going to get a starter set, but I don't know how much further I'll go into it. I also don't know who else is going to play it in the area. But if you're interested in it, you want an epic naval game, I think this is going to suit, suit the bill very well. So make up your mind. Hopefully this was informative. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel.